evening and welcome to the sharing of God's Word tonight. We are still in Proverbs. Uh, you can take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs 18.24. That's going to be our key text verse tonight. I've titled my sermon, That's What Friends Are For. As you turn there, a couple of weeks ago I discussed this whole friendship thing with a, with a friend of mine. And he shared with me some wisdom when it comes to friendship. He said, or he likened it to, I want to thank my arms for always coming alongside me. I want to thank my fingers because I can always count on them. And I'd love to thank my legs because they support me. Now these are truly friends that sticks closer than a brother. And that's our text tonight. Our scripture reading, Proverbs 18.24 says, A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Let us pray. Our Father, we praise you for tonight. We praise you for the sharing of your word. Lord, we are thankful for your word. Lord, James says we do not have because we do not ask, so we ask for wisdom. We ask that you would teach us now as we dig deep into your word. I pray that you would convict hearts. I pray that you would comfort hearts. Lord, I pray that you would meet uh, the people where they're at and that we would be strengthened as a body as we look to you. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friendships are a big part of being a human. We were created relationally. I mean, God told Adam that it's not good for man to be alone. So the question I want us to answer tonight is, what kind of friend are you? What kind of friend are we? We see in our text that there is a contrast between two kinds of friends. Those whose friendships are superficial, or they act as socializers, and it can lead to, to being ruined, or it leads to destruction. And then there's that rare jewel of a, of a friend that sticks closer than a blood brother. I'd like for us to look at tonight's text under three headings. And the first heading is called the so-called friend. And that focuses on the, the first part of our text. A man of many companions may come to ruin. I'd like for us to look at words that Spurgeon spoke. And I wonder how many of us can identify with these words. It says, A faithless friend is sharper than an adder's tooth. It is sweet to find rest in someone, but oh, how bitter to have that support snapped and to receive a grievous fall as the effect of your confidence. Faithfulness is an absolute necessity in a true friend. We cannot rejoice in men unless they will stand faithfully to us. Now this first part of the text talks about bad friends or so-called friends. Friends that cannot be trusted and that disappoint. Now why would these so-called friends disappoint? Well, they disappoint because you think that they are friends. But as soon as you need them, they turn on you like a snake and they bring destruction. Those that call you their friend when you have money. Only when you flatter their egos. When you need to do what they want you to do. And only then. As long as you like or comment on their comments on social media. As long as you engage in the same hobbies as they do. Especially if you, as long as you do not disagree with them. Or even worse, as, as long as you don't pick on secret sins in their lives, then they will be your friend. But on the flip side, as long as you keep the requirements of the world, you will have many friends. That's what our text means. Now, you might be fooled into friendships like these, but you will be horribly mistaken. And following the theme of Proverbs, you will be a fool to invest all your energy in friendship like these, these so-called friends. And this is what Solomon is warning his son about. He says, my son, choose your friends carefully. Why? 
because they can ruin you. They will not only disappoint you, but they will destroy you. They will break you into pieces. They'll hurt you. They'll do evil to you. Or worse, they will expect you to do evil on their, for their sake, on their behalf. Now, Solomon goes and, and, and he describes this kind of friend even clearer in Proverbs 19, verses 6 to 7. And it colors the picture even brighter. He says in verse 6, Many seek the favor of a generous man. And everyone is a friend to a man who gives gifts. All a poor man's brothers hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursues them with words, but does not have them. These kind of friends are friends that are only friends for what they can get from you. It's not a giving of themselves. There's no two-way street. There's no openness. There's no transparency. There's no sacrifice. Now, they might seek your friendship because you're influential. They stroke your ego and try to be nice to you to gain what you can give them. As long as you buy their friendship, they'll be your friend. He goes further in his warning and he says that when you are poor... That these kinds of the so-called friends, they will avoid you. And the basic meaning of this passage is, is fairly clear. These people express hate in their rejection. This shows the superficial nature of these friends, the so-called friends. If you can give to me, then you're my friend. If you can't give anything, then you're not my friend. They will abandon the poor man. It's similar to the difficulty of Job. And it's a, it captures this meaning of abandonment. If we can't speak into your life, if we can't get something from you, you're not my friend. Now, these kinds of friends can be identified as people that gives you compliments so that they can gain from you. Only to turn around and whisper or backbite or gossip behind your back. Proverbs 16, 28 says, it says, a dishonest man spreads strife, and a whisperer separates close friends. You see, there are ulterior motives. So-called friends holding on to you as long as you can prove your friendship through gifts, whether it's verbal, emotionally, or physical gifts. These kind of friends would also want to isolate you and, and keep you for themselves. Friends, as soon as you need to change who you are and what you believe, you need to start asking some serious questions about your friendship with that friend. Even more serious, as soon as your friend wants you to do things contrary to what Jesus expects you to do, you need to turn around and run away like you would run from a prostitute. Don't fool yourself. Spurgeon said these convicting words. He says, the friendship you acquire by doing wrong, you had better be without. It sprang up quickly because it had no depth to it. Be friendly to all, but make none your friends until they know you and you know them. My friend, you need to know who your friends are. You need to know what they believe. They need to know what you believe and what you stand for. So, before we turn to our second friend, I'd like to ask some questions. And they are probing questions, so listen up. Let's focus outward. So, what kind of friends do you have? Can you identify with people in your life that I've just described? Selfish, only trying to gain from you. People that require you to do certain things that, to keep their friendship. Well, be wise. Listen to Solomon and find other friends. Why? Because you might be ruined. But let's turn it around. We focused outside about friends that you might have. But let's turn it inside, closer to home. What kind of friend are you? Are you one of these so-called friends? 
Are you one of these people that is only attracted to friendships that you can get something from? Are you the so-called friend that is only attracted to friendships because you have similar interests? Like running, or golf, or computer games, or you enjoy the same intellectual pursuits? Are you only a friend with those that agree with you? Which, by the way, is dangerous. And especially on social media. Do you mind sharing your friends? Or do you want to keep them for yourself? Are you friends with the opposite sex? Because you get some emotional need met because of some shortcomings at home with your own spouse? Are you the friend that deserts another one because that friend is going through a difficult time? I mean, it's going to drain you emotionally, physically, and maybe even financially. Yeah, I can't, I can't engage. Are you the friend that also gets something out of the relationship? And only get, but never, never, ever give. If that is you, then you should take time. Take time to think who you are as a friend. Because, as we saw on the outside, you might be ruined if you have the wrong so-called friends. But you might be, in this case, inwardly focused. If you like this, you might be, like our text says, part of the many. And you might be the one that's causing the ruin, the destruction in your friendships. So, let's look at the next friend in our text. The true friend. So, we saw the so-called friend. Now, let's look at the true friend. And our text says... But there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Yeah, it, it refers to, to a friend that, that loves and glue themselves closer to you than a blood brother. A, a sibling that comes from the same parents. We need to remind ourselves that God is relational. And we are created in His image. Hence, we are relational. These friends, these true friends, love one another because they see Jesus in each other. This is why they stick closer than a blood sibling. It's because they are glued together with the blood of Jesus. Augustine said these words, For no one can be truly a friend unless... He is first a friend of the truth. Why? We need to be grounded in the truth of Jesus, in the Word. Let me read it again. For no one can be truly a friend unless he is first a friend of the truth. And you'll see why I say this and why Augustine said it. Firstly, the, the true friend will give you rest for your soul. Proverbs 17.17 17 says, A true friend loves at all times. There is a constant love that keeps on giving. No matter what, I'm just pouring my life into you. Whether it's during good times or during bad times, that's what friends are for. Always giving. J.C. Ryle said, This world is full of sorrow because it's full of sin. It is a dark place. It is a lonely place. It, had, it, it is a disappointing place. The brightest sunbeam in it is a friend. Friendship halves our sorrows and doubles our joy. Don't you want to be a friend like that? Don't you want a friend like that? A true friend loves all the time. And how can they do that? It's because they're grounded in the truth. They love you as they love Jesus. A friend that sticks closer to a brother than a brother. A friend that loves all the time as we just saw in Proverbs 17:17, 17, 17, needs to be involved in your life all the time. This is why a true friend is truthful. Proverbs 27 verse 6 says, "Faithful are the wounds of a friend, 
Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. True friends expose a sin in us. Those sins that, that keeps us away from God. The hard words of reproof from a friend is more valuable than the insincere affections of an enemy. The wounds of a friend can be trusted because they are meant to correct. And again, it can only be trusted because it's grounded in truth. But a so-called friend's kisses are deceptive. I mean, think of Judas. He kissed Jesus on the cheek as he betrayed him. You don't want that kind of love. Sin deceives us. It darkens our understanding and makes us fools, as we saw in Proverbs 9 a couple of weeks ago. So much so that we may be walking in sin and still be convinced that we are obedient to God. Think of the Pharisees. And this is why we desperately need true friends. We need friends to lovingly show us our sin. We need friends to help us see our blind spot. It's not called a blind spot for nothing. You cannot see it. We need friends to point and shed some light on it. We need friends to speak with brutal honesty. And it reminds me of Ephesians 4.15 that says, To speak truth in love. Can I just apply this text to our Proverbs text? To speak truth in love. Now let's see the, the friend zone here. There is no place for being a jerk in the friend zone. What do I mean by that? It only focuses on the truth, not on the love. Firing accusations. Well, you did this and look at this and how can you do this and how can you disobey this? I, can you even call yourself a friend? That is true if it's true sin, but it's not spoken in love. Then another section of the jerk zone is to come around like, well, um, I hope you, you don't uh, take this in the wrong light. And I'm sure you're not guilty of this, but um, I just want to kind of point this out that you might be guilty of. Um, that's not speaking truth. Speaking truth is, my brother, I believe you sinned in this area. How can I help you? Or what is wrong? Can I... That is speaking truth. That is speaking in love. But then the other section in the friend zone that we cannot entertain is that you are so sen sensitive that your skin is translucent. You're like a snowflake. That no matter how we point sin out in your life, no matter how gentle someone speaks to you, you get upset. That's also not a true friend. In the friend zone, there's a sweet spot where you come lovingly, speaking truth, having a clear conviction. You prayed about it and you come alongside a brother or a sister, not in front of them pointing fingers, but coming alongside a brother and a sister and, and try and help them for their good. That is speaking truth in love. And I'm going to read this next quote, which is a really convicting quote, but Listen to it in the light of Ephesians 4.15, to speak truth in love. Proverbs 17.17, 17, where it says, a true friend loves all the time. Proverbs 27 verse 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Listen to this. Godly friends will wound us for our good. They will rip open our carefully crafted excuses and stun us back to life. Amen. Can you see there? A godly friend will wound us, not for his good. So it's not, I want to prove a point and I'm going to show you your sin to prove my point. No, 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 no. It's for our good. I want to help you, brother, sister. I see you are struggling with a sin, and this sin is actually driving a wedge between you and God. That is why I want to wound you. It's going to, it's going to hurt, but we need to rip the carefully crafted excuses away, but stun us back to life. 
We do not need a band-aid on a festering wound keeping the pus inside. We need someone to rip the band-aid off, expose the sin to light, but then that same friend that ripped that band-aid off to expose the sin needs to come alongside and, and nurture this wound back to health. That is lovingly coming alongside someone. We need transparent friendships. Can't say that enough. We need people in our lives and we need to be those people in our lives to come alongside and, and be transparent because we all grow in holiness. Why? For the glory of our King Jesus. Now we can only nurture these trusting friendships if we are willing, if we are willing to invest in these friendships. Now how do we do this? Proverbs 27, 17 says, it's a well-known proverb, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Now you can't do that if you don't have people in your lives. We need people in our lives to speak truth in our lives. Sharpening us. And obviously, as every sermon I've heard on Proverbs 27, 17, always say that there'll be sparks. Iron causes sparks. But you know what? If it's a true friend, those sparks will not turn into flames and burn down the house. But instead, a good friend, a true friend, would be deliberate. It's going to hurt. It's going to cause sparks. But you know what? I'm going to engage. I'm going to, I'm going to help. Because I expect the same from you. So, some practical friendship points. We should be a friend who wounds in love. And not, as the Proverbs 29.5 talks about, being a flatterer. We're not here to, to stroke each other's egos. We need to speak truth in love. We need to love all the time. We need to wound so that the wound can heal. Not flattering. We should not only make friends, but we need to maintain friends. It's hard work. We need to invest. We need to give and receive in friendships. And I know for sure which one is the easiest. Proverbs 27, 5 to 6, we saw this earlier. Better are open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Thank friends who love enough to wound. Remember, it's difficult to come speak truth in love. There is a, a certain awkwardness. There's a, a certain fear of rejection when you speak to someone. There is a certain way of doing it, and, and you're not sure how. So, when someone speaks into your life, thank them when they do that. Why? Because it means they love you. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, a friend in Jesus. They want to see you grow. Love them. Thank them. Pray for friends that will build up and affirm. Pray for yourself to be a friend that builds up and affirm. Take initiative to ask a friend to be honest, to point out your weaknesses and blind spots. Forget the age limit. Multi-generational friends are a great gift. I have friends of different ages and I th I'm thankful for them. It's a great gift. I've learned from old, mature and young. True friendship is interested in the other. So listen, ask questions, and be committed. Be patient in friendships. It takes time and, and effort to mold and strengthen a friendship. When there's tension in the friendship, sort it out. Don't run away. I have true friends, and some of us, have had a big tension in our friendship. But can I tell you, every time we had tension in our friendship and we sorted it out, the friendship was stronger for it. We need to remember that we are still human 
And even these true friends might disappoint. So don't give up. And in light of this, we've seen now the the, the so-called friend, which is not a friend, the true friend that might and probably will disappoint you at some time. But now let's look at the ultimate friend, a third heading, the ultimate friend. And as you can guess, Jesus is the ultimate friend. He sticks closer than a brother. Why? Because he created us. He adopted us into his family. But this is, however, only for those that are in God's family. Those whose lives reflect who Jesus is. Those that have put their trust in Jesus' saving power to deliver them from eternal death. Those that trust in Jesus' work on earth, on the cross, in the grave, and now seated on the right hand of the Father in heaven. Those that know that it is not because of their good works that they are saved, but because of their faith and their trust that they've put in Jesus, His good works. These people have the ultimate friend. A friend that never disappoints. A friend that is always there for you. A friend that always has the best for you in mind. A friend that always has wise words to offer. And a friend that has no, that has no fear in stripping away the band-aid when necessary. And his name is Jesus. Now, we were once and still are sometimes like the so-called friends when it comes to our relationship with Jesus. We betray him through our sins. We want him to change according to our lives. We are selfish and only want certain things from him. We even sometimes push him away. Yet, Jesus does not reject us. Instead, he he pursued us by temporarily giving up his friendship with the Father as he hung on the cross for our sin. Dane Ortland says in his book, Gentle and Lonely, um, and hopefully we'll have a couple of thousand of them available in the coming weeks, he says this, Our tendency is to feel intuitively that the more difficult life gets, the more alone we are. As we sink further into pain, we sink further into felt isolation. But the Bible corrects us. Our pain never outstrips what he himself shares in. We are never alone. That sorrow that feels so isolating, so unique, was endured by him in the past and is now shouldered by him in the present. What comforting words is is this to reflect on Jesus and him sticking closer than a brother. Jesus is the true friend that sticks closer than a brother. He intercedes for us. He gave us life, his life for us. He reaches out to us. He lovingly wounds us as we grow in his likeness. And he preaches the ever good news in our ears every day through the Spirit. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If you are in his family, you can with all confidence and assurance put your trust in the friendship with Jesus. But, my favorite word, there's a flip side to the coin. For those that do not know Jesus as their brother, can I encourage you to reach out to someone that does know him as, his bro- uh, as their brother? Can I encourage you to put away your friendship with the world and put your friendship and trust in Jesus alone, casting all your cares, your sin and burden on him? He is just. He is faithful to forgive your sins and he will never cast you away. It's never too late. So, the question begs, Are you the person, the so-called friend, that will be destroyed or be ruined? 
Or are you the so-called friend that is doing the ruining, if I can put it that way, the destruction, causing the destruction? Or are you the arms that comes alongside a friend? Are you the fingers that people can count on you? Are you the legs that always supports? My friend, we need to biblically redefine and assess our friendships. What kind of friend are you? Ultimately, let us look to our friendship with Jesus and leave all the terms and conditions outside and pursue a true friendship with Jesus alone. In closing, if we could sing, I would choose to sing this, but I'll read it. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, we praise you for who you are. We praise you that you sent your son, our brother, our true friend to earth, Lord, to rescue us, to restore the relationship between us and you. Jesus, we praise you for what you've left behind to, to come and be friends with us. We're thankful that you came to serve and not to be served. We praise you for the, the way you've incorporated us into your family. Holy Spirit, we praise you for being with us, helping us in our friendship, guiding us in wisdom. And I pray that you would help us. I pray that you would help us not to be the ones that cause us ruin. Help us with wisdom not to be ruined, but help us to be true friends, friends that mean well in wounding in a loving way, friends that pursue and always give, friends that love. I pray that you would help us to remind us to take all of what we have, to take it to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we're thankful that you are faithful. We're thankful that you are carrying our troubles and our griefs. What a privilege it is to be in your family. Lord, I pray that you would Again, convict those hearts that needs to be convicted, but encourage those hearts that needs to be encouraged. Lord, grant us wisdom for the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. I would encourage you to pursue friendships this week in a special way and in you. Enjoy.